And joining us tonight is psychiatrist and financial review columnist, Dr. Tanvir Ahmed, and Nova Radio's Michelle Stevenson. Look, I think we all got the memo that we're all going to be very <laughs> blue. Yeah, blue. Yeah. So, yeah, look, we are blue. Speaking of that, it seems to be the collective but, yeah. mood but around the country. But each of us is a different blue. Yeah. It's, blue. it's a Republican the, blue. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the, uh, the, the shade of the, cause the, uh, the national mood at this point in time, because let's jump into... The news it was dominating the headlines all day, and I'm sorry to tell you it's going to dominate the headlines all day tomorrow. Your Wednesday newspapers, starting off with Brisbane's The Courier Mail. It is leading with Killer of Dreams. Dan destroys Commonwealth Games. The Adelaide Advertiser, Dan's Com Flames, is the headline. And the winner for the worst political spin is... Andrews. That's a bit of a riff on the Sydney 2000 uh, Sydney Games there. Over to the Canberra Times. Victoria's stunning Commonwealth backflip. Games over. And let's head to Dan Andrews' home state. Melbourne's The Age. Victoria's Big Bill. And the 2am call that delivered the fatal blow. More on that a little bit later. And finally, Melbourne's Herald Sun. Games shame is the headline there. But let's uh, head to some breaking news tonight. We can reveal here on the front page that PwC reports may have guided Commonwealth Games valuation. Documents show that the beleaguered consulting firm, PwC, was responsible for part of the valuation case study of Melbourne's bid for the now shuttered 2026 Commonwealth Games. In two documents published between 2019 and 2022, the firm outlined the social and economic benefits for the host cities, highlighting how the billion dollar events can have a positive impact on the feel good factor of a city and also laid out ways that funding can be obtained from third parties and the private sector. Game On, delivering sustained infrastructure outcomes through major sports and cultural events was published after the Birmingham Games and stated how large scale sporting events can even impact environmental sustainability and spark, and I quote, connection. In another 200-page report titled Commonwealth Games Frame Value Framework and compiled for the Commonwealth Games Federation, it's important to note, it outlines how to leverage public and private sector buy-in and how to guarantee returns on investments. And here I quote from that publication, in securing national funding, the benefits of the Games to the country as a whole should be presented. As such, the incentives of each potential public sector funding body can be aligned and public sector funding from a range of sources can be achieved. That's what the authors for PwC stated back in 2019. There were also instructions on how to share the financial burden with non-government public sector bodies. In addition to the general government budgets, the budgets of other public sector organisations can be leveraged to fund the Games. For example, national sports or arts bodies may be willing to contribute to specific elements of the Games to help achieve their objectives. As above, in seeking funding from these bodies, the benefits of these stakeholders need to be clearly articulated. Premier Daniel Andrews's core reasoning for the cancelling was because the cost of the Games had escalated now to $2.6 billion to in excess now, in 2023, of excess of $6 billion. 